Litecoin people. I'm talking about Litecoin. There's so much to talk about. Welcome to the Morning Cryptos. Morning, it's Mark Shepard. You have reached the hypnosis of money and the morning cryptos, where I talk about the markets and I talk about the mind and the mass hypnosis of markets and of all different kinds. So uh, today we're going to look through the uh, the history a little bit of Litecoin. Then I'll get to uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Dash and Monero uh, on my my quick scan, but I want to talk about Litecoin first because it made a significant move yesterday, and you know I was thinking in my mind that Litecoin was uh, kind of the little engine that could, you know, that it was a little slower than the others. But then I <laughs> I squeezed this chart down, and it's really only been moving since April. I mean, back in March, Litecoin was trading at $3.98, people, right? So Litecoin is not a slow mover. It's moving like a son of a bitch. When you, when you pull the camera back a little bit, look at this trajectory, okay? Just see if I can... Oh, come on, there we go. You know, <laughs> that that's from April to August, right? That is quite the move. And if we look at it, if we look at it on the one month charts, it just looks like it goes straight up, okay? So Litecoin is not a laggard. Litecoin is moving. Litecoin is actually doing some interesting stuff. Let's look at the one weeks on this chart. You know, there's rarely been a down week since April. So uh, I just wanted to kind of give you guys that perspective before I kind of dial in. Uh, and as I've said before, we have a, you know, we had a beautiful... Um, multiple top here. And essentially what's happened is it made a run for 55 yesterday afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, and it hit, it hit some resistance, right? So, and it came back a little bit, but it's, it's still there. I, my prediction is that it's going to keep moving. Uh, because evidently, uh, Charlie Lee was tweeting about this whole SegWit thing that just happened, and Litecoin is actually affected by it, um, so that it's something so that it enables Litecoin and Bitcoin to kind of swap networks a little bit, and uh, or a lot, and so it's actually a really good thing. So I'm looking for Litecoin to keep cranking. I think we're going to see $100 Litecoin in the not too distant future. But that's that's my totally and completely uneducated uh, hypnotist's opinion, right? I'm not a financial guy. I am an artist, a creative guy, but I see patterns. That's one of the, the things that I do on guitars. I see patterns and these to me, these these charts look a lot like musical uh, you know, musical sine waves, you know. So I kind of get that. So, anyway, also one of my heroes uh, is the guy in the in the big short. If you've read that book or watched that movie, uh, the guy who was playing the drums, uh, he's kind of an Asperger's guy, and he's a real guy. And in real life, after the whole big short experience, he basically quit and he picked up the guitar and he started learning the guitar. That's kind of, I get that kind of person. So, I don't know who you are, but 
if you're watching this, it's because you are trying to understand this new world of cryptocurrency, perhaps like I am. So let me dial in a little bit, see if I can get my finger on my mouse to do what I want it to do. The problem is this is so close to the top of the chart here. There we go. So this is where we are today with our little friend Litecoin. Not so little when you look at the big picture. It's come a long way since April from $3 to 50, you know, in the 50s. That's pretty amazing. And it's all happened because people's perceptions about it and what it is have been constantly changing. All right, so here we have the one hours. If you if you want to catch this baby, now's the now's the time to get in. It's taking a little breath. I think it's going to move. I could be wrong, right? I don't know. We cannot foretell the future, but that's what makes it so interesting. Someone left a comment on one of my videos this morning. You know, dude, you have a gambling problem, and I think we do. I think I do, but. I can walk into Las Vegas and I'm not tempted at all to play a slot machine or do any of the stupid ass things they, they want you to do to get your money. But these, and, and particularly, you know, the last couple of weeks, I was, I was really kind of curious about the whole high yield investment programs, um, which most people call scams, right? And Ponzi schemes. And they may be, maybe they are, uh, but there's something, why they exist and why they're always successful and why there's always another one. I mean, <laughs> my, I had a, a former uh, a former girlfriend who started doing a Ponzi scheme. It was just for women. <laughs> and it was just a classic Ponzi scheme. Everybody kicked in X amount. It was their three levels. And it was just like... It was classic, and and all these women were doing it, and some of them were were getting some money, right? And then it falls apart. I still think there would be some way to harness the greed on both parts and to make it fair, so that you know both the there would be risk on both sides and reward on both sides. But there had to be some skill, right? Some some chance and some skill. But then, like, you know, we have something. It's called the cryptocurrency market. We have something called the stock market. I like the cryptocurrency market better than the stock market because it's just starting. It's, right? It's a whole new market that is just beginning. Anyway, I'm getting too philosophical, I can tell. But my coffee's starting to hit. So there's Litecoin on the one minute's if you think it's going to go, good time to get in. Look at the support on the one minutes. Where is the support? The support is right here at 51-ish. <laughs> and and we, we did get up to 52. Let's see where we can make this chart a little smaller. So this is the one minutes. So there's a lot of these, right? Um, let's get to a bigger, a bigger perspective here. Right, so the, I have my little line is in here. That's where it is right now. Can I trash that? Oh yeah. All right, so that's Litecoin. I I think it's gonna go. I think it's gonna keep moving. It was so exciting yesterday when I came. I was about to take a shower, and if you saw the video before this one. I came out like right when I was making its move and I got to literally watch it crank up here and test it tested this 55 range and that's that's its resistance point. And so my guess is that it's going to trade in a range again and work its way up here and try to break through or it may just bolt and go for it. Either way, right now is a good time to get yourself a little Litecoin if you want to ride this. I don't think it's over. You know, and again, that's what I think. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. All right. I like it. I like Litecoin a lot, and I like the idea. And it's so much faster to use than Bitcoin or Ethereum right now. It's it's amazing. And and that's word of mouth. People need to know. This is a currency that works, right? And it's 
and, and what we're going to see is we're going to see a card that you can use that has the main currencies on it. And you can, you know, whichever you get a better rate on, you can use or whatever the merchant prefers, you can use and you can swap in and out of them fairly easily and fairly quickly. I don't know. Could be good for business. Could be good for, for the economy. We'll see. All right. So that's Litecoin. Thank you for listening to my philosophical ramblings. I will try to stay more on point. Uh, but I think some of this is important, and this is this is why I do this as well, because I think deeply, and hopefully I don't overthink, but it's enjoyable. Now, Bitcoin, looking good, right? Bitcoin looks like it's taken a little step back, and it's getting ready. It's also going to be affected. It's going to be benefiting from the whole SegWit thing. I would look for Litecoin to move again. We have... Uh, you know, we have our resistance here at 44.87 is the tippy top top. And we have our support kind of in this range here. It did take a weird little dip. I don't know about that, but it took a weird little dip. So we have some support kind of here. So it's, it's touched down at about 4,000. A little, little bit lower than 4,000. So there's, I would say, support at 4,000. Um, and people keep coming in. The world is just beginning to know. There is so There are so many people that are going to want to buy Bitcoin that you cannot imagine this market going any higher, and yet it will. That's, to me, the fundamental that's driving this. And again, just watch the news. Bitcoin's all over the news these days. It has gone from nothing to becoming a major, major player. There's gonna. I just saw a little ad for. Um, uh, there's gonna be a big meeting in New York in September, and the all the institutional investors are invited. The name is escaping me because it's early in the morning. Um, but you know, if if a ton of institutional investors come in to the market in September and in October the stock market takes a hit because it seems like it's fairly predictable that when when things are at a top in October things pop right um, we could see Bitcoin literally going to 10 grand it's possible and the more we talk about it again the more we imagine it happening the more the fundamentals begin to support that idea and the more we talk about it with people and the more the news media picks it up and the more we talk about it and the more we think about it and the more we listen to it, eventually it becomes a perceived truth, right? That is the hypnosis of money, people. And that's that's why I'm doing this. And uh, I'm exploring... In, in this particular challenge, and every 90 days or so, I take up a, a challenge. I start working on stuff in myself that I need to work on. And money is one of the things I definitely need to work on. Um, there will be some other areas that I will work on as well, like health and um, relationships and love and all that kind of stuff. But right now, it's the money. All right. The one hours, we have a nice little trading range here, and you can actually see the support is a little higher. It's the support is kind of at 40, 45, and it's uh, it's looking really good, people. I think Bitcoin is looking really good right now. Good time to get in and uh, see where it's going to go. All right, so thank you for that. Let's go to Ethereum. All right. I'm going to get a little bigger picture here. There we go. All right. So Ethereum working its way up, working its way back, working its way up to 400. That's where it's going to go. I got a little Ethereum and I might get a little more. <laughs> it's a good, good time to get in. It's in a trading range. The, uh, you got you got your top. You 
got your top right around 324 and it's now trading around 321 and you have your bottoms right coming up sideways range these are the these are the sweet ones babies these are the sweet babies these are the ones they taste so good mm-hmm nibble on the tiny toes all right and on the 30 minutes you can see that my line is a little screwed up. There we go. Can I move it? Right now, the top is 322. And we got some room to go to 324. Because it's been there recently. And on the one minute, oh, it's, it's making some moves right now on the one minute. So... I always like to check the one minutes before I even trade, and I try not to do it when it's like doing this. <laughs> um, I prefer it when it's a little bit more like this, so I know I have I have a decent chance of getting a decent price, right? So that's really that's crypto trading 101. You got a time getting in, and you don't have a whole lot of precise control of when you get in, uh, and that's just true of any market. By the time you make your bid, the market could have moved, right? Um, and no one wants no one wants to uh, sell to you at that price, right? And that's human psychology. But it happens on a mass scale, and it happens fast, right? And it's constantly changing. Uh, so that's Ethereum. I like doing this, I really love doing this every day. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and by the way, if uh, we're going to go to Dash now, if you like these, please subscribe. I really appreciate the subscriptions and the comments, and I'm a real person, and I, I read my comments, and uh, I am trying to be transparent as I learn so that if you're learning too, you know that you're not alone, and there's not. I'm not going to laugh at you if you have a question, You know, right? You know, because I'm asking some pretty basic questions and and some of these financial guys are probably laughing at me and that's okay they're welcome to go find somebody else but this is this is me putting it into practice every single day to pay attention to these markets to see what I can learn to see if I can find a way to make a living doing something I love to do that combines well with all the other things that I do to make a living that I love doing, <laughs> like music and, and art and writing and storytelling and hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming and reading and researching the human mind. And it's all these things. And this is perfect for me right now. And mm, it fills my heart with joy to play with this stuff. So Dash, again, making a move. There is so much happening in this space. Uh, I don't know if I get in right now. Um, you had you had a chance to get in a day or so ago. Let's look at the one days. One, two, three, four days ago, we had a down day. And looks like we are going to move again. But the resistance here is at 320. So if you got in now, um, chances are it's going to look to test this upper limit so you know you got a little little room to move uh, and it is doing a somewhat sideways range on the one hours and the sideways range is uh, moving the bottoms are all moving up and we have your classic triple top on the one hours right here one two three that's a classic move you could still get into dash and um, I've got a little, I've got a decent amount of dash, so I'm watching it. And uh, let's, whoops. Okay, let's look at the 30s. Not a bad time to get in. It's right in the middle of its narrowing range. You see, it's coming up and it's staying flat. So right in here, 295, you could get in and and get yourself some dash. And the way to do it is to. If you have a wallet, go to Shapeshift or use the Exodus wallet, and you can swap it 
swap Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or anything you want in there for some Dash. Or you can go to Poloniex. I'm probably going to open up an account on Poloniex soon, maybe today. Um, and I'm going to, I'll try to figure all that out. I think, you know, it's like you start at Coinbase and it's easy and simple. And then you can gradually start to do things that are a little bit more um, big boy and big girl. <laughs> all right. Love and Dash. I think you could still get into Dash. Um, it feels to me like it has some room, but it, it may also, you know, it may stop. We don't, we don't know. So, okay. Let's do Monero. Whoops. Monero. All right. If you want to jump into Monero, it's having a little tiny pullback. It's having a little pullback. <laughs> and Monero, I like a lot. It's a, it seems like it's really, um, Got some stuff going for it. So we have this. We have this kind of upward range that has been broken. And now it's a sideways range. And it looks like, you know, the bottoms in this sideways range are all down. All right. So the question is, is the support enough right here to keep it from going farther down? Is it going to rest on this resistance? Or is it going to head down to this resistance point? Right? It moved fast and it moved up. So what I'm seeing is that it's exactly like... Think of it this way. In hypnosis, when someone makes a change, often the change is abrupt and complete. Let's say someone's finally ready to stop smoking and boom, they quit smoking, right? There's a movement. There's a like... A movement, you can call it like the tectonic plates, they push and push and push and then they move. And then there's a period of time where you're getting used to the new way of being, right? So a currency seems to move and then it seems to get used to being at this new price. And then everybody has to kind of get used to, oh, Monero's now 85, right? 100 seems like, whoa, but we can handle 85. <laughs> and I was like, a hundred? No, but 85 seems reasonable now, you know? That's why, like, it pushes up and then pulls back. Because it's like you're pushing the comfort zone constantly of our perception of value. And that's, again, that's a factor of the human mind, people. That's hypnosis, the hypnosis of money. And, man, I'm having a good time today. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I just wanted the guy to point out the market. I didn't want I didn't want a bunch of philosophy. Well, hopefully you do want philosophy because how we think and what we think about is the real game. It's the real where it's all at. So Monero's looking like you could get in. To me, that's my opinion, my uneducated opinion based on days and days of experience. <laughs> so uh all right. I think this is a good moment. Monero's taking a breath. I think it's a good moment to get in and, uh, and to be patient with it for a little while. All right? And to see what it does. And I don't own any Monero, and I'm thinking about signing up at Poloniex so that I can get some Monero. Um, but it's not yet supported by the Exodus wallet. So, ah, right? Mm. And uh, so that those are the things, the convenience factor, like if something's in the Exodus wallet, then you can do it, and that's going to help it. So, like, whoever is in charge of Monero, like, needs to work with Exodus, and I know Exodus is working on this, but they just don't want to, you know, splat it up there. They have to, they have to do it intelligently. And uh, so there you go. That's the morning cryptos, people, and there's so much more here. There's... Augur, there's Ripple, there's Stellar Lumens, there's Zcash, there's NXT Price. I don't know, you know, oh, NXT is the name, not the product, yes, right, Litecoin Price. Yeah, it's like, oh, what's this new NXT Price? No, that's the name on them. That's the name that Gold Price is putting on there. Anyway, so that's it, people. Keep an eye on our little friend, Litecoin, because I think she's going to rock and roll. I think SegWit is like the best thing it's going to benefit Litecoin perhaps even more than Bitcoin, but we'll see. 
I think um, I think there's some interesting stuff in the wind. And uh, in the meanwhile, we want to crank up our crypto. So this has been your morning cryptos. And my name is Mark Shepard. This is the Hypnosis of Money. It is day 25 of my 90-day challenge. And uh, so much has happened since July 31st when I first started. And I, I started exploring some of these crazy high-yield investment programs and uh, uh, trading. And I've been trading uh, the cryptos since about, I think I bought my first Bitcoin in February. I remember the price was 900 and I thought it was too late for me. I thought that it would never go much higher than 1000 and it's far, far higher than the price of gold. And in many ways, so much better than gold. And in many ways, not gold. <laughs> but what is gold? It is just something we've all agreed has value. That's all. It's a shiny piece of metal that has many uses. Um, silver is a shiny piece of metal. It has many uses. These blockchain currencies are far more than just currencies. They have many, many uses. The blockchain has many, many uses. The value exists. As long as the internet exists, the value is there. And then the big question is, you know, can the internet continue? And it looks like it's gonna. <laughs> we don't know. Anything could happen. So, Litecoin's taking a little little breather, and I think it's going to move some more. I think it's going to test this 55 range, and let's see where it goes. All right, people, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, for subscribing. I really appreciate your comments, and I do the best to reach out to all of them, and, if, and I appreciate it, and I wish you well. And the thing is, educate yourself. Learn. We all want an easier, faster, better way, but sometimes the easier, faster, better way is you actually taking some time to learn the fundamentals of how to do something new that challenges and excites you and can also benefit your wallet. All right, cha-ching, baby. Let's start some music. Thanks.